you'll need to become brutally honest with yourself about two things in the next 6 to 12 months. The first is what you do not want, and the second is where you will land if you continue to do the same things. Keeping an eye on what others are doing and where their activities are taking them is a crucial life lesson. When you do this, you observe what others are doing and form your own opinions. You should be open to what you can alter in order to be different rather than merely closing your head and accepting what you see. It's your narrow-mindedness that is driving you to mediocrity. You must retain an open mind and explore what the surface has to offer. You need to consider more deeply how you came to be in this circumstance. Naturally, experience and observations both allow you to understand what you do not desire. These two items will expose you to the reality of life rather than just your fantasies. These big visions for the future are fine, but they should be grounded in reality. Don't misunderstand. I'm not here to inspire. Seeking for such a goal is just looking out for yourself. You must use your own experiences to determine whether something is beneficial or harmful for you. You may visualize a future for yourself by planning for it. The greatest approach to create the future you desire is to do just that. However, there is also something called as an anti-vision in this context. You would feel quite upset as a result of the bad energy it creates within of you. This is primarily due to how strong negative energy is. It may ultimately cause you to alter your life goals. It is comparable to going to the gym and warming up on the treadmill while contemplating how different your life would be if there were no gym. If you didn't put this energy into your exercises, where would you put it? If there were no gyms, you would be surrounded by this negative vibe and may even feel it by yourself. But you should be aware that negative energy need not be harmful. Negative feelings shouldn't be repressed in order to appease others. They should be put to good use instead not in the sense of hurting or offending others. You must thus develop your anti-vision. Furthermore, it will take time for this to materialize. Get a notepad and start outlining your goals and creating a plan. Simply sketch up whatever you believe will assist you in creating your future, but first, start by writing down everything you do not desire in this life. These may be the simplest questions, such as what you don't want to look like or what you don't want to do for a livelihood. This will make it very obvious what your true desires are and how your vision can assist you. It is why it is completely the opposite of the anti-vision. After developing your anti-vision, whenever you look at it, you should feel uneasy after experiencing it. If you don't take control of your life, you should be concerned with the idea that these things may occur to you. All of these negative things might happen if you do not take control of your life. These elements help you achieve your future vision which is the main objective. This goal should be important to you and something you want to work toward. Your anti-vision results from allowing nature take control of things while letting your life spiral out of control. Entropy takes control when you can't. Or much better, the universe's main law. If you don't establish balance and order in your life, chaos will eventually take over. There is no getting around it. Therefore, you should record your vision in the same notebook that you recorded your anti-vision. The goal you want to accomplish for yourself. Be the eccentric inventor who works on the project of their life and changes the world. All of these initiatives will require planning, strategy, and execution. You'll begin where you'll start working. Be careful to follow what you write down after listing every important daily task. Get really detailed and get into the finer points. To avoid falling prey to entropy, establish structure for your day and eventually your life. There are other methods you may accomplish this, but the one we've previously covered will be most effective for you. Ripping off the band-aid and getting rid of whatever you don't think appropriate is the wisest course of action. The finest aspect is that no one will require an explanation of who you are. Give yourself a pat on the back if you eliminate something from your life that makes you feel awful, there is only one person to whom you must answer, yourself. It's because feeling awful is a fairly terrible thing. It will have a negative psychological impact on you and is useless. You don't need to focus your thoughts on individuals or things that won't enhance your life. 
Your ultimate aim is the future, therefore you must focus this mental energy there. You should not welcome any obstacles in your way since you are moving forward. You will move from anti-vision to vision because you have put in place a structure that will stop entropy from taking over your life. Your life system will eventually be in order, and you'll need energy to keep it that way in order to avoid entropy. In this instance, bring mental energy to bring your vision into being. Make it a routine to enhance your foundational skills, but keep in mind that these skills will help you grow. The most successful people in today's society have a regular practice of practicing repeated acts, so these essentials aren't dull. You repeat the same behaviors frequently to level up over time in a game that simulates the real world. You're overcoming challenges, defeating foes, and interacting with people who will aid you on your quest, correct? As a result, you must direct this energy toward the natural world and enter through doors that can only be helpful. There will undoubtedly be stumbles in your way, but you will ultimately learn to overcome them. We are correct. You won't be concentrating on tactics or plans. Instead, you'll be focusing on some basic principles that are essential to success. And remember that these aren't monotonous. They are boring because they are repeated, but keep in mind that triumph over suffering. Nobody can match your level of competence in a certain area as long as you can master it. Take the example of a tennis player. There is a particular way how they hold their tennis rackets. It takes them years to learn how to do this and then master their grip. As they play different opponents over the years, their holding technique improves and ends up making them the best player to play the sport, if they master it, of course. Use a tennis player as an example. They handle their tennis rackets in a certain manner. They must first learn how to do this and then perfect their grasp, which takes years. If they can perfect their holding technique over time and against a variety of opponents, they will eventually become the top player in the sport, of course. There is no set period of time for everyone to learn a talent. The first concern when beginning anything is how long it will take to see results. Everything relies on the individual and how hard they are ready to work to improve. A skill takes years to master. It does not require several months, a lifetime of trying and failing to create anything lovely. Make a selfless commitment to something such that you are happy with the outcome. You must be prepared to invest years in a project to make it successful. Become used to the idea of repetition and skill mastery. Every good origin tale has a dedicated individual who has spent their entire life honing their skill. Therefore, it's time to change things up and be ready for repetition. Let us know in the comments whether you wish to bring the change we've talked about in your life today. It is time to be focused on your life and bring it back on track because no one else is going to do so. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss out on any new videos from us. Turn on the power inside of you to change your life. A centuries-old technique, known as seed retention, enables you to channel your body's life force energy into any part of your life. But not everyone can grasp the ability to hold on to their seed. You must first endure the mental anguish of resisting your cravings in order to master the art of keeping seed. But as they say, no pain, no gain. You must first become a master of your thoughts beyond the advantages of seed preservation for the mind, which you may already be aware of. Let's talk about how maintaining your seed makes you a stronger combatant. To enhance testosterone levels before fights, the majority of fighters refrain from hitting their meat. However, how does this help a non-fighting average seed retainer? You may have noticed that a man always wants to sleep as soon as he sheds his seed. However, sleeping during a battle would be his last preference. According to Bruce Lee, he is not uptight. Rather, he has a fast, relaxed mind, and his body serves as a vehicle for this mind. Mike Tyson asserts that the majority of fighters are knocked out even before they enter the ring. This also applies to turning off your brain before battles. Always remember that seed retention makes you physically powerful 
enables your mind to become hypercharged and gives you a superior feeling. Many gods and creatures from Hindu mythology practiced brahmacharya. As long as one doesn't spill, they can manage their impulses like a king in a palace full of women, and they were powerful enough to face death on the day they wanted to. Simply said, maintaining your seed is a means of enhancing your human soul. But it's not an illustration of selflessness. A man must beat his meat ten times a day to be considered selfless. The greatest approach to activate your alpha mode is to incorporate weightlifting, proper diet, and seed retention into your everyday routine. Of course, there are more habits, such as meditation and others. The fountain of youth is the most potent component of the male body. In your late twenties, seed production levels start to decline. At that point, people begin to develop debilitating health issues. One way to approach death is through losing seed. Death is a slow process. You pass away every day before finally disappearing from the planet, having accomplished nothing for the sake of fleeting pleasure. When you realize that it has taken control of your life, you stop. When there are numerous things available to lift your spirits when you're down, but your mind is only interested in those, you should stop. You begin putting things off, you get disorganized, and you start to doubt yourself. If you do notice these signs, yes, you must practice seed retention. This is the most potent energy and can be used in any way. People have even ruined their reputations and names for a brief moment of pleasure before realizing the harm they have done to themselves. Successful people like Napoleon Hill have said that intercourse is the act of changing one's thoughts from impure expressions to thoughts of other kinds. The strongest human want is romantic love. Man acquires keen imagination, fortitude, willpower, persistence, and creative skill. When propelled by this passion, you may use the same energy to build wealth, succeed in your career, and perform well in school. In general, it takes a lot of blood and white blood cells to make seed, and when you ejaculate too much, you lose vital fluids and a lot of blood. Girls lose blood every month for four to five days, and if you lose more blood than a girl, you will weaken, and girls can sense it. Who can protect them, and has a full tank, if you waste too much seed, you will not be respected by them, and will be ignored by them. Ejaculating is perfectly normal, and satisfies a physical demand. However, one must be extremely cautious to avoid becoming dependent on it. Dopamine hormones, sometimes known as happy hormones, are well known. It gets to the point where you start developing a strong urge to masturbate to feel happy or delighted. When you masturbate frequently since your mind recognizes that behavior and produces dopamine to make you happy, it begins to manipulate your thoughts at this point. Seed retention is quite effective. It enhances spirituality, as well as mental and physical wellness. Many people think that seed preservation enhances emotional wellness and helps divert erotic energies to other aspects of life. All that sensual tension and desire will be transformed into ways to enhance your life, like starting a business. Up until the age of 25, the majority of people in ancient times engaged in brahmacharya. They don't start ejaculating till they are 25. Because it was a part of their lives, those who followed brahmacharya in the past already possess a pool of strength and were able to reap its benefits. They already possess all the advantages and they work diligently at all tasks. You will find it simpler to defend your family and stand up for what is right if you have this energy stashed up. Most men experience bullying at work or school because they never engage in retention exercises. They consequently become vulnerable to attack and mocking by other guys and weak. However, if he persists, he will grow so strong that no one would dare to harm him, not even mentally. Your objective should be to develop into a modern warrior who is powerful on the inside and out. Extremism has two distinct sides. Two men, one weak and a worshipper of women, who simply detest conversing with women. In order to avoid losing your seed, eat healthily. Lift weights to increase testosterone, develop courage, and enjoy divine female companionship. 
There is now solid scientific proof that daily ejaculating is bad. A study on rodents revealed that hormone release was unbalanced after repeated ejaculation had interrupted their circadian cycles for two to three weeks. Your brain releases feel-good endorphins after ejaculation that are identical to those made after using drugs or tobacco. Ejaculatory addiction may result from this. During intercourse with a female, the male body is designed to discharge seed. When this occurs while masturbating, the body eventually begins to believe that his reproduction process has been completed. Consequently, fewer pheromones are released to lure in partners and testosterone levels drop. After a balanced diet and seed retention, you'll discover that your testosterone levels and sensitivity are stronger and that 99 of the males on the street are weaker than you. These differences would be seen in plus-sized ladies. By the way, it's important to point out that, unless you've chosen the monk mode road, denying all pleasure and delight to women might not be the best course of action. Just consider it. We are one of the planet's seven billion people. How did we arrive here by magic? No, we arrived here by striking our cheeks. It is necessary for the body. Now, we're not discussing hookups or short-term relationships. Only pursue chastity up until marriage if you haven't lived in complete monk mode your entire life. Save this energy for when it's appropriate. The hormone that preserves masculinity is testosterone. Less of its release results in lower levels of intelligence, assertiveness, beard development, and even irregular heartbeat. After all, the production of seed results from the testis ongoing use of several proteins and DNA. The seed that has this DNA is just as crucial as your unborn child. Pouring it out can result in lower blood sugar levels, which can lead to fatigue and weakness. Having intercourse is vital to the body. As long as hookups and toxic relationships are avoided, it revitalizes the body and mind. However, most animal intercourse is performed purely for pleasure and is not intended to result in pregnancy. If a guy is attacked, his only option for self-defense is to attack back. Therefore, when the retainer uses violence to defend himself, it becomes golden. A man should have the inner nerve to be able to kill an opponent, just like your body has antigens to kill Vyra Yuzithias. Because they taught too much weakness rather than becoming true fighters, some Tibetan monks were recently slain. The goal is to become a modern warrior, to be strong physically and mentally, and pity on those who take the path of the weak men, or simply worship women, hate women, or never talk to women, and hate themselves for dreaming about women or relapsing. If you want more videos like this, be sure to hit subscribe and take a look at the other videos on the channel. And with that said, thank you for watching. Don't forget to show some love by hitting the like icon. See you in the next video.